Our walk through Newbridge begins at the Pfizer Roundabout, or Buckley's Cross, as you enter the town from the Dublin side. Looking towards Old Connellstud, you will see a fine moat and bailey, built by the Normans in the late 12th century. Adjoining the moat are the remains of an ancient church and burial ground associated with St. Connellth, a hermit and goldsmith who resided here until called by St. Bridget to become the first Bishop of Kildare. He's patron saint of Newbridge Parish, and in the year 519, he attempted the pilgrimage to Rome, but was killed by wolves in the woods on the outskirts of Dunlavin. His remains were interred in Old Connell. Some time later, they were removed to Kildare Cathedral and placed in a shrine next to those of St. Bridget, but lost on the sacking of the monastic site by the Vikings in the 9th century. From Buckley's Cross, if we take Great Connell Road for one mile, we come to a crossroads. The lane to the right was once the main highway from Nace to the Curra, but now leads us to a small graveyard with in the remnants of an old church, all that is left of the magnificent abbey founded in the year 1202 by Myler Fitzhenry, a grandson of King Henry I, and on his death in 1220 he was buried in its chapter house. The abbey was suppressed in 1540 after the death of the last prior Walter Wellesley, then Bishop of Kildare. His remarkable tomb is preserved in Kildare Cathedral. Returning to Buckley's Cross, we now proceed in the direction of the bridge. When the old bridge was demolished by floods in 1789, the Duke of Leinster commissioned engineer William Chapman, who had just finished work on the Grand Canal extension to Nace, to rebuild it. Chapman rebuilt the bridge downriver at its present location. He redirected the high road at Buckley's Cross to meet the new bridge and continued it in a straight line to meet the old road at Gandog Lane. This new road would later become Main Street and Edward Street. As we near the bridge, we pass the Holy Family Convent, built in Gothic style by architect J.J. O'Callaghan in 1875. Next to it stands St. Conlet's Parish Church, built from 1847 to 1852 in the early Norman Gothic style. The church took its present form in 1893, when transepts were added, doubling its size. Chapel Lane connected the old and new high roads until the old road was closed around the year 1860. It took its name from the chapel or mass house which stood on the banks of the river by the old bridge and served the parish from 1730 until the opening of the new church in 1852. Before 1730, the parishioners would have attended mass at Ballymany, but this ancient chapel was pulled down by the vicar of Nace because, he claimed, it was on the direct road to his church and too close to it. The present bridge dates from 1936 and was modernised in 2006 with the removal of walls and the addition of a walkway on either side. It replaced a much narrower five-arch stone bridge which was built in 1790 by William Chapman. Standing on the bridge and looking upriver, you see the watering gates, which as the name suggests were used by the cavalry at Newbridge Barracks to water their horses. This is also the site of the first bridge dating from around 1690, which gave its name to the town. An old gas pipe can be seen crossing the river here, which is all that remains of the town's gasworks, erected in Chapel Lane in 1859. The gas lamps were replaced by electric lights in 1929 and the gasworks closed in 1937. Looking downriver from the bridge, your view ends with the Dominican College. Tradition has it that in the year 1756, the first friar, Father Hugh Reynolds, arrived by boat from Yeomanstown at the invitation of the parishioners. They gave him three acres of Rosebury Commons, which formed the nucleus of the friary. The commons no longer exists, having been enclosed soon after the railway crossed it in 1845. Three churches have stood on the site, all dedicated to St Eustace. The college saw its first pupils in 1852 as an all-boys boarding school, but today is open to both sexes. Looking up Main Street, the whole of the left side was once one of the largest cavalry barracks in the British Empire. The barracks were built in the years 1813 to 1818 on land leased from the two landowners in Newbridge, Eyre Powell of Great Connell and Ponsonby Moore of Moorfield. Demolition of the barrack buildings began in the 1930s and continued through the 1970s. A county library, built in Art Deco style, opened in August 1936, as did the new bridge. A vocational school opened the following year next to the library. The Riverbank Arts Centre now stands on that site. Liffey Terrace, built just before the First World War as married soldiers' quarters, was then inside the barrack wall. The imposing Newbridge or Nowhere mural is on the wall of the old Barrack Schoolmaster's residence at the entrance to St. Conlet's Park, the county GA grounds which opened in 1931. Previously, these grounds were the cricket and parade grounds of the barracks. 
The town hall was built in 1859 as the Garrison Church, serving the Protestant soldiers until the departure of the military in 1922. The first stone was laid on the 30th of March 1859 by Lieutenant General Sir James Chatterton, commanding officer of the Curragh district. Behind this church stood the main blocks of barrack buildings, providing accommodation to over 1,000 officers and men, with stabling for a similar number of horses. Bordnamona occupied the central portion of the old barrack site, with the west side being taken by the Irish Ropes and Newbridge Cutlery. The right side of the bridge as far as Moorfield Road was the commercial heart of the town until recent times. The houses on Main Street here were built over a 20-year period from 1815 to 1835 on plots leased from Air Powell. The town consisted of just one street until the building of the Curragh Camp in 1855, which resulted in a building broom in Newbridge and led to the development of Air Street, Charlotte Street and Edward Street in the years 1855 to 1870. Working our way up from the bridge, the first lane is Francis Street, formerly Harrigan's Lane after the one-time proprietor of the Prince of Wales Hotel, now the Air Powell. The next street we pass is Thomas Street, formerly Rambler's Alley, one of the more notorious thoroughfares in Newbridge in the British days, also known as the She Barracks, after the ladies of easy virtue who resided there and earned their living providing services to the men of the barracks. Next we pass John Street, beside Coffee's Pub, which was formerly called Lumper Lane, and Anne Street, formerly Tay Lane, named after Anne Farrell, one time time postmistress of Newbridge and mother of the chairman of the Newbridge Town Commission during the renaming of the streets in 1882. Robert Street was formerly Mergen's Alley, both names referring to the businessmen who resided either side. Mergen's Bakery, in existence for over 60 years, is today O'Rourke's public house. Next door is the Arch Bar, from which, in 1859, Robert Goff started his auctioneering business, which became the premier bloodstock auctioneers in the country, and are now headquartered at Kill. Georgia Street was named in honour of King George IV, who passed through the town on his way to races at the Curragh on a very wet day in August 1821. The view up Georgia Street ended with the fine courthouse erected by Air Powell in 1858, which burned down in 2002. It was deemed uneconomic to repair and was demolished. We reached the west boundary of the civil parish of Great Connell as we come to Charlotte Street, named after Air Powell's sister, who succeeded her brother as landlord of Newbridge on his death in 1871. It was previously known as the Robertstown Road, suggesting the importance of the Grand Canal town some 200 years ago. And later, on the arrival of the railway in 1846, it became Station Road, which name it's still in use today. We now reach Edward Street, supposedly named after Albert Edward, the Prince of Wales, who spent the summer of 1861 in training on the Curra, yet managed to get himself into a spot of bother with a local actress named Nellie Clifton. He was recalled to London by a very irate mother. The last street we come to is Henry Street, named after Henry Moore, the eldest son of Ponsonby Moore, who succeeded to his father's estate on his death in 1868. Here is the former Oscar Cinema, which opened in 1908 as Sheridan's Picture Palace, before the opening of the Town Hall in 1927 and the Odeon Cinema in 1940. The last house on Edward Street was the Crown Hotel, which opened in 1870 and was a favourite with army officers from the barracks at the Curragh Camp. It was later known as the Grand Hotel and the Rockingham and today is Judge Roy Beans. We now reach Moorfield Road, which once a row of pretty thatched cottages extended from the Crown Hotel westwards, their little gardens in front enclosed by low walls overhung with perfumed roses as described by a traveller through the town in 1855. Directly opposite was the Lancers Field, where the cavalry exercised their horses. Later, Abbins Field, it became the Irish Ropes Car Park in 1972 and was developed as the Courtyard Shopping Centre in 2000. The British Legion Hall stood here from 1922 until the late 1960s. Just beyond is Gando Lane, a name perhaps of Irish origin, which is the last remnant of the old high road and on the abode of the infamous Wrens, those unfortunate women who found the ditches convenient for their nests and from where they transacted business with the troops in the barracks next door. A toll gate also stood at the entrance to the Gandog until 1848, when removed due to competition from the newly opened Great Southern and Western Railway. A little further up the Moorfield Road we arrive at Bourtree Lodge, formerly the residence of William Bourne, who held the contract for the mail coach service from Dublin to Limerick and who operated toll gates on this route. It was, of course, a mail coach stop. Opposite Bourtree Lodge was Doyle's Hotel, now Moorfield Lodge. 
Our final destination on this walk is St. Patrick's Church of Ireland, or simply Moorfield Church, which was built in 1828 with the support of the local landlord Ponsonby Moor, and once stood in rural countryside midway between his domain house and the new town opposite the barracks. The church field to the rear of St. Patrick's was once forested and a favourite haunt of the Wrens. It is now the site of the Crescent and other newer housing developments. So this concludes our walk through the centre of Newbridge from Buckley's Cross to Moorfield Church.